Sports Fam. It's Darian checking in with another episode. Today we have a special guest, the owner of Sweet Feet Sports Performance, OD. Um, is in the building. You know, we really do appreciate you coming out. I know we've been trying to get you on here for a little, you know, a little while, but just the schedule and things like that. So we do, you know, appreciate you coming out and being on the podcast with us. Yeah, definitely, man. I truly appreciate it. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, looking forward to some good topics we got here. Yeah, for sure. And I guess for the people watching who are out there who don't know who you are and, you know, don't know what your business is, if you kind of want to give them an overview just to kind of give them an idea. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, Sweet Feet Sports Performance is a uh, – Defensive back based uh, business, you know, specialist, uh, coach, whatever you want to call it. But I deal with, uh, you know, defensive backs at all levels, you know, from eight, nine years old to the NFL. So, you know, it's 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 levels to it. But, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a special thing going on and it's young and it's and it's growing. OK, yeah, for sure. And um, I mean, is it just specifically DBs or I mean, if there's like linebackers and things like that, is that something you kind of want to grow into or do you train people who come to you and say, hey, I play linebacker, I play running back or. uh, You know, I try to keep it specific, you know, just so that I don't, you know, flood myself with a bunch of different things. I want to be a master of one thing, you know, so. But yeah, for sure. Linebackers uh, in today's football, you got to be able to cover, especially if you want to be on the field oh, for, for three sure. for three downs, you know, so. Yeah, we do. A, we I definitely accept linebackers. Uh, actually, promote linebackers to come because it's gonna. I mean, it's only gonna improve. You know your cover skills with you guys having a guard. You know, H backs and you know running backs and tight ends. You got to be able to move because those guys are you know turning into four fours and four fives. So oh, for sure, yeah, no, it's definitely a lot <laughs> of so, technique to go into. Yeah, being a DB and yeah, things like sure. that. Definitely one of probably the the most athletic positions on the field, if not the most athletic. Yeah, Arguably, sure. I played linebacker, so I'm always going to say linebacker, you know, <laughs> is the toughest, but, you know, it's, it's neither here or there. Um, but I guess your story, um, kind of how did you get started? Um, when did you maybe start playing football and kind of get into, you know, into the business of wanting to train? Uh, small. Uh, I'm from a small town uh, in, in called Midland, Midland, Texas, uh, you know, in, in West Texas and, it's nothing but football there. So growing up, I kind of just, it kind of, you know, had a family, a competitive family, had a sister, had a brother, and I had a lot of siblings, you know, cousins that, uh, you know, were all in the sports. So we always competed at everything that we did. So, you know, football was just one of the sports that I, you know, was just extremely attracted to. And, I, you know, I would want to watch it. My mom said, you know, growing up, I wouldn't do too much cartoons. But <laughs> she said, you know, all she had to do was just, you know, turn on the turn on that football and I would literally just sit still and just watch it so you know maybe it's something that you know it, it just always was intriguing to me but that's kind of how my my path started I grew up watching you know Cedric Benson Eric Winston uh play at Midland Lee and win you know state titles mm-hmm. I think my f- my fourth fifth and sixth grade year they won back to back to back so you know that's huge you're talking yeah. about you know 5A football in Texas and oh, yeah, sure. I think that just that that championship just pedigree it was just kind of in me because because I was in the feeder program you know and things like that so you know always play fast forward I moved to Georgia in the eighth grade and you know it was good football out here too I you know I went to a, a, a feeder school for North Cobb High School out in Kennesaw and you know just just pick right back up kind of where I left off in Texas and you know it was a it was a rough it was a rough kind of road for me uh you know in high school because I, I come to a talented school uh that kind of had a, a group my group that class of 08 mm-hmm. they kind of always played together you know how some groups they just it's just a bunch of talent in that one class yeah. and that's kind of how they were so I kind of had to wait my turn you know to, to play so it was it was it was a lot of growing pains a lot of you know a lot of nights where I was just like, you know, is this for me? But it was just something that always in me that just said, you know, just keep pushing, just keep pushing. Like, I loved it so much, I just couldn't let it go. Yeah. So long story short, you know, I didn't start varsity until my senior year of high school. And uh, we had a great season that year. Uh, I had a great uh, individual season myself. Uh, ended up getting, you know, defensive back of the year in my county. Uh, you know, uh, ended up having like ten Division One, you know, offers in, in one season. So it was it was it was definitely a blessed situation to be a part of. Uh, we were ten and zero that year, ranked number one in the state, uh, ranked in the country, top twenty five. So uh, it, it ended up working out, and I like that. You know, b- during the time, you know, you frustrated, you are young, you don't understand like what's going on. But you know, I I, I kind of like my situation for kind of where I'm at now because I can kind of tell I could look a kid dead in his eyes like listen bro I, I get you're a junior 
and you know you're entering your senior season and you don't have nothing yet, but you're looking at somebody who did it in a time where, you know, we're, we close in age. You know, we, we, we didn't have huddle where, you know, the film is uploaded that night of the game. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we didn't have social media where we can just go upload our, our tape or whatever and anybody could see it. It was more so CDs, you know, email, yeah. stuff that took t- a lot of time. You know, you might send a CD, it might not get there for 10 days. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And if they don't, if they even if they, open yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> they, I mean, and, and we yeah. and we all been in the offices. Yeah. They, man, the CDs, man, they, they they just, if they don't recognize the name, they're not even popping it in. Yeah, so, exactly. you know, it, it was just a different time. But it was all, it was a blessing to, you know, to be able to, you know, go on and play, you know, at the next level. And went to Georgia Southern, uh, played there as a true freshman, transferred to Carson Newman, uh, you know, later in my career and, you know, had a good career there. Uh, so, you know, I've been playing football pretty much my whole life. So uh, I can go all day. But oh, for sure. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I guess once you stop that. Uh, yeah, once I stop that, Newton, I'm just trying to give them. Yeah, the, I'm exactly. trying to give them it so they can feel me. But, exactly. uh, okay, boom. So fast forward past Carson Newman. Um, I ended up playing. I, I My career kind of stopped at a kind of weird. It was kind of a weird situation. You know, I didn't get a senior year of eligibility. Uh, it's complicated, but. I graduated, uh, and I and I knew I didn't want to just give up on the game like that. I so I, you know, pro day at the time was because all right. Let me let me go back just so they can understand. Okay, yeah, no worries. I went to Georgia Southern as a freshman. I played there. I, I only played in a few games. So I when I transferred, I was you know told that I would have four years of eligibility when I was at Carson Newman. So I'm having a good career. I'm rolling into my senior season, and that spring, you know, NCAA compliance calls and tells us, hey, you know. This is the case. They're they're charging you for the year at Georgia Southern, and you know it kind of hit me. I was like, wow, like what? Like the, my whole time, I'm thinking like you know, and you you that last year you ramping up, you know, like yeah. all right, I gotta I gotta I gotta be very detailed. I gotta be this this, this it. Yeah. You know, this could be my last time ever putting pads on. So you know, I want to play somewhere at the next level, whether it's the NFL, Canada. I didn't care. I just want to play ball. Yeah. So I was gonna put my best on tape, and you know, going into it and coach. You know, I played for a Hall of Fame coach, Coach Ken Sparks, and he was kind of telling me just how he, you know, w- what he was hearing. And basically I was going to be a preseason All-American going into this year. And it just kind of – all of this stuff is running through my head as they're telling me this because Pro Day has already passed. We're in spring ball. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, wow, I can't even just jump in Pro Day and just show them what I got. So, uh, man, I just told myself, I was like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do after college, but I do know that – I feel like I'm going to be in some position of leadership. So I'm going to give everything I got to this game before I go tell another kid, you know, give yeah. everything you got. And I ain't even do it myself. Yeah, I so long story short, man, I went all around the country trying out for CFL teams, trying out for AFL teams. A couple NFL teams came by, but, you know, they, they just want the height, weight, measurable, and run you in the 40, and they gone. They ain't yeah. even, and that was my specialty. My specialty was, you know, the movement, the ball skill, yeah. you know, the the, the on field, on field, work. yeah, on field work. That that's what separated me. But um, no, didn't get a chance to, to do that. But it, it was a blessing because I told myself, you know, I was going to be a professional athlete at some point in my life, and I did that. You know, I didn't play in the NFL, yeah. but I did. You know, end up landing a contract with uh, the Cleveland Gladiators of the AFL. Played there, um, played in the AFL for two seasons, short stint. But what really, what really drove me to 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 where I'm at now was, you know, obviously the love and things like that. But I had a my 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 dad, he always, you know, we we just growing up, you know, watching ball with your dad. You gonna, you know, me, I was, I was, I was, I loved it so much, I was uh I was assertive. I was like, I wanted people to know. So I would, you know, I would talk to my dad like that, watch this situation, watch that situation, and it would happen. And he would always be like, Man, you know too much about the game to just not be around it. Like he was like, you need to figure out a way to 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 give back to kids because he said you know these kids don't really know the game and know what's going on like that they just playing and my db coach from college would say the same thing he was like man i recruit a kid he'll be a good athlete he can he can do everything i asked him to do but he doesn't really understand the position like how to play it so he's like, i'm I'm spending more time trying to teach him that versus the scheme and he was like i feel like you got a real bright future if you can figure out how to piece it all together and just start start a business of you training you know defensive backs and I just finally gave it a go. Like that's kind of what gave me the last, you know, kicker uh, to do it. But I, I mean, I worked after the AFL. I worked uh, for Coca Cola for two years, and then got into logistics. I was a, a logistics account manager for two years, 
So this four years removed from playing yeah. ball. But one thing I never stopped doing was exercising. For whatever reason, I just had like a voice in my head like, you got to grind. Like, you got to be structured. You got to be almost as if I was still playing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I was working at Coca-Cola, you know, working logistics, nothing to do with sports. And I would go home and literally hit it. Like, run, you know, make sure I hit the gym and lift. So, yeah. you know, I, it was, I think it was just all preparation for where I'm yeah. at today. Just never lost touch with. Yeah, a lot never. of people lose touch with. Yeah, yeah once they like, kind of go into the corporate world, they kind of, le- you know, lose the touch with what, you yeah. know, they loved at one point. Right, and exactly. You never kind of lost that. Yeah, I just never, and it wasn't forced, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because you know one thing about exercising and and being and doing that, it's not easy. You're not gonna. Oh, yeah, you nah. can't fake that. <laughs> it's different. People don't understand in high school and college, you kind of forced to do working out and yeah. things like that. But, but when you graduate you get, and you, it's your choice to go work out. It's a lot harder to get up in the morning, yeah. in the afternoon to go work out. Exactly. A lot of people don't understand that. <laughs> but nah, nah, that's good that you know, even though you were in the corporate world, you were still working out, running, mm-hmm. lifting weights, doing all your training and things like that. Um, I guess when. When you decided to finally start, you know, wanted to be a trainer full time, kind of walk us through that experience of, um, I guess, how, how long did it actually take you to be done working at Coca-Cola to kind of be 100 percent into your business? Or did it did it take a while or? Uh, I'll be honest with y'all. Before I even started working at Coca-Cola, I tried to do I tried it mm-hmm. and nobody contacted me. Like I po- I remember I posted it, said, hey, you know, I'm doing this, da, 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 nothing. No traction. So I was like, all right, <laughs> next. That's yeah. how I ended up getting my dad. You know, been working for Coke for a while, so he, you know, got me on okay. and stuff like that. But that's how I ended up working for Coke. And then, you know, did four years of work, you know, two there. And like I said, two with the logistics company. And I just, what what kind of really pushed me over the edge was, I was like, you know, I actually can do the hard work and, 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 and do it the way our parents did it. You know, the yeah. 30 years, the 401K, that way. But something in me was just like, you got to try your way before you just submit to something that you already have seen before. You know, we, yeah. we know what, what it looks like to go work for these companies for, you know, 20, 25, 30, 40 years. We've seen it from, you know, the people before us. So I just told myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing well at my jobs, but it it's, it's seems, seems no purpose behind it. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just grinding. you kind of like, you know, obviously – feed my family and, you know, live a good life. But it's also like, what is I, what is my purpose here? And that's the kind of feelings I started feeling. And, man, I just started training on the side. I, I said I started training on the side. It probably took me a year. Probably took me a year of just kind of just training on the side, just any little free time I got, I would just. How did you, how was that different from, I know you said before you started Coke, you tried to, you know, train, nobody would message you. How did you start getting the you traction? Know, that, that traction? Uh, So <laughs> it's crazy. Cause the second time I was like, all right, I'm going to get a bit, I'm going to get a little bit more assertive. I'm going to make a video. Okay. You know, the first time I just post like a little flyer. Okay. And that's easy for yeah. somebody to probably scroll past. Yeah. But somebody talking on the video, and especially somebody you might know, you might be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So I got on the video, and, uh, you know, I, I told him what I wanted to do. I, I, I told him kind of my vision and my path of, that I wanted to go. And didn't get much traction. Kind of kind of got some, you know, what you know, what is it about? What it, just kind of like more so yeah. informative questions than actually let me train with you. I got blessed, though, because I had my cousin that was currently, at the, at the time, he was at Westlake High School entering yeah. his senior year. Okay. It's kind of like me, no offers, and, you know, I just told him to trust me. I said, bro, I did this myself, so I trust me. I could take somebody else back through and make it work. So yeah. I, I was working with him, and it was just me and him at first, and then when it really clicked was I, I told my wife, I said, hey, man, you should probably come out and, you know, just kind of capture some of the stuff that we're doing. It don't got to be the whole workout, maybe two, maybe yeah. two, three minutes, or just a couple drills, and I, you know, I posted that first video, and, it just clicked, bro. Like, I literally just posted one video, and, you know, Kendall Vildor, that mm-hmm. cornerback for the Bears right yeah. now, he the first guy to hit me up, and he was just like, hey, man, you know, you look like you know what you're doing. Like, I want to lock in with you and stuff like that. And it was literally just a snowball. Like, you know, I got with Kendall. I got with Rashad Ajayi. I got with Stanley Green. Like, now, was Kendall, was he in the league at that time? No, or Ken- was- Kendall was a sophomore at Georgia Southern. Okay, he was still yeah. at college. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was still in college. I, I didn't have any NFL clients okay. at, to begin with. I – my my situation is kind of weird. Normally, you think you would start with like youth yeah. or something like that. Mine started with just training my cousin, senior high school, post a couple of videos, and boom, you know, college, all, college guys. It was more so college guys because you know when you get to college, you get to that level where you like, 
I need that knowledge. I need that extra craft, that extra yeah. work. And that's how it went, bro. I, I started training Kendall, and it just went boom, 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 boom. And I would, you know, I would train them. I would I would record the workouts a little bit. I might post a, a little picture, you know, after the story. I mean, after the uh, after the workout on my story, I might tag them. Mm -hmm. And other people would see it and be like, who is that? Who is that? And I think that's kind of how it started growing. Like, uh -huh. you know, they would just see us working out on my story and, you know, just, you know how people are, man. You yeah, just, just kind of get on sharing. The phone. And yep. I mean, that's amazing, though. Like you say, you start off just training family, you know, at Westlake, and then it kind of built you into, I mean, if you maybe want to, I don't know if a lot of people know exactly. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people do know who you are and things like that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you started from a high school family member into training some of the top NFL guys still out there actively playing today. And, I mean, kind of how does that feel for you to, like, kind of see your growth over that that time period? I mean, because I know it's not, it's not all always about just because you train the top NFL guys. Right. Because I know for you it means more – I think it means more and more so like the younger guys who are kind of in your position, right. you know, that you're trying to build to get them to that level of, you know, kind of their dreams and their goals. And um, I guess kind of explain that situation. Yeah. Um, I I mean, it, it's exciting because, I mean, when you put hard work into something, naturally you 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 want results. Yeah. You know, you, you seek results. And for me, it is it's not like a starstruck type of thing. It's more so like a. Like, I knew it would happen. I just didn't know when, you know, because I knew I knew my stuff. I love the game. I study the game, you know. So I'm, I'm. It's not like I'm out of date, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm constantly, uh, you know, talking with my guys that I train. I'm constantly watching the game and trying to see, you know, how our offense is trying to attack defenses, how our defense is trying to stop or slow down offenses, yeah. you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm in tune with the game. So that's the way. That's what I bring to the table when I, when I train you and. You know, I, I knew over time that guys would kind of notice me and kind of be like, okay, let me try him out or let me let me see what this dude is about. But it's it's definitely a a, a, a great feeling, man. Like to to be like, man, I've you know I work with Jalen Ramsey. You know, I'm cool with. I talk to Xavier Howard all like yeah, exactly. almost every week, just on some cool. You and then know. those guys, I don't know if a lot of like they come to you in the off season when they get two, three, four weeks, maybe a month out. You know, during the off season, once the season actually over, they come and train with you, correct? Right. Right, you know, I mean, I move around too, but most for the most part, most guys they don't mind coming to Atlanta, uh, to Atlanta because you know it's a nice city. So I shoot down to Miami sometimes. I shoot down to L.A. because that's where most of them are. If you're not in Atlanta, you either in you know L.A. or yeah. Miami, things like that. But I mean, it's a great feeling, bro. But like you say, I, I love the 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 uh, the process in training a, a ninth grader and, and grooming them up to being yeah. a Division One player or training, ten, you know, whatever the case may be. Cause I just remember how I was in high school. Like I didn't really have much guidance. You know what I mean? Yeah, as far as like, what do I times, do? Yeah, yeah, what do I do? Like, I I know I want to go to college, but like, how do I get there? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, I feel like I had to be the person that I that I was missing back when I was in high school. You know what mm, I'm saying? And yeah. don't get me wrong. Like, both I have great parents. I have great parents. They was always there. But as far as the recruiting the recruiting process, yeah. they didn't really understand that yeah, part exactly. and how to, you know, yeah. how it how it went. So somebody like myself that went through it at a tougher time, you know, now for me it's easy. I'm telling the kid, all you gotta do is listen, bro. Put in the work, really be like dedicated and focused and put all your energy towards that. And it's gonna happen, mm -hmm. you know. That simple. But if you got the talent, you know, it's gonna happen. So, it's it's definitely a blessing to, to you know, give back and and give kids something that I didn't even have myself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I, then, I love that part yeah, of the training. Oh, for sure. And I guess uh, something. I guess for those younger kids, you know, making that decision whether they're junior or senior, getting ready to commit or thinking about committing, kind of what. What do you, when they come to you for advice and things like that, or just in general, it doesn't have to be them coming to you for advice. Like, what kind of things do you tell people or tell those kids or those parents? What should they look for when deciding to, you know, what school they want to go to? Kind of yeah. like, what are you? Um, I, I tell them to be realistic for one. Like, always be realistic, you know, and find a, a team that fits your playing style, fits what type of, you know, look at the defensive players. That's how I, that's how I view it. I mean. Some coaches like longer, longer defenders. Yeah. Some coaches don't care. They, you know, they just plug and play wherever the best man. And you got to kind of sit back and kind of look at that because you don't want to go to a let's let's talk corner. You don't want to be a five ten corner thinking you're gonna be on the island. Yeah. And you go to a school and every one of their corners six feet plus. Yeah. You're probably gonna get bumped inside to the nickel or safety. Yeah. So 
you got to kind of just pay attention to things like that, like the little details. And also, I mean, it's hard to kind of say build a relationship with a coach, but you got to kind of yeah. have some type of rapport with the with the coach and see what how he teaches it and how, you know, their scheme is. Granted, he could be gone in a year or two, yeah. but – you, I mean, that's just part of it, part of the part process. Of yeah, yeah, you just got to kind of go from there. Like, look at the defense. See if you could picture yourself there. And are you know are these the type of players? Is this are anybody? Is anybody out here? Can I see myself kind of resemble? Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, the relationship with the coach. So I just try to, you know, t- tell them that more so than than follow everybody else or the cloud or whatever they want to call it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't, you don't, definitely. You kind of got to, like you said in the beginning, you kind of got to do your own research too with the players. Cause I mean, coaches, not saying all coaches, but I know a lot of college coaches, they'll kind of tell you anything just for you to commit. Like you're yeah. going to play early. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. But I, I know a lot of those kids, they kind of believe that in the beginning, but then mm-hmm. when they go to that school, first second year they may not be getting no real playing time and exactly. then now they're thinking about i know now they couldn't do it when we were younger but they can you know get into the portal and try to transfer but yeah. that's kind of you know it's, it's a little harder to do I, I think you know if like you said if instead of you went to a school that kind of fits your your plan and your model and things like that instead of just i'm not playing but people also with that people got to realize they're still young you know what i mean i know a lot of these top athletes in the uh you know in the country they number one in the country in this position, number two in that position, they want to get to college and play right away. Right now, yeah. And I guess if you got some advice for those people out there, because a lot of them get discouraged when they go to college and they don't play their first year or even maybe split reps their sophomore year and they're ready to transfer, like, you know, nothing. Like they didn't, you know, I guess because they're so used to being a man right. where they come from. <laughs> and, I, I, you know, I see that a lot. And I know you probably experienced that with some of your athletes and yeah. things. Like what what do you kind of suggest about that? Uh, I mean, I, just, I would just say – I mean, if you go into Alabama or Ohio State yeah. or, you know, schools like that, bro, listen, if if you if you can get on the field at those schools as a true freshman, we know you're a guy. Like, yeah. you're one of those guys. But don't get frustrated if you don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not a bad thing because some guys need the red shirt year to, 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 you know, grow themselves mentally, physically. You know, a lot of guys come in, they're a little frail. After that spring, you notice after that, that first spring they go through – Boom, you see 20 pounds, 15 yeah. pounds, you know, and it's good weight. So yeah. it's like maybe you need to be a little bit bulky or a little bit, you know, whatever the case may be, a little smarter or anything. You know, it, it it's a process in college and it's long. So I don't I don't get the instant, you know, why guys want to just instantly be plugged in. You know, it might not be your time. And you, it's not like the NBA. You can't leave. Yeah. Until, you got you to gotta do your three years. So yeah. it's like. Maybe you only got to do one year. Yeah. I mean, it's less wear and tear on the body. Yeah. I mean, maybe you only got to do two years. Yeah, and I think a lot of times it gives people the opportunity to do self reflection. Like maybe you came in thinking you were this guy, exactly. And, and then when you really get there, there's two or maybe one other person in front of you that was just that much more better than you. Right. That you know, I know a lot of people go based off like five star, four stars, but I mean, there's a lot of good two, three star athletes. Yeah. When they get to college, it just clicks and like yeah. they're the man. Exactly. I mean, you can you can name a ton of NFL athletes. Just like that, who two stars, three stars, maybe didn't even play that much, but when they got to college, it's just click. They put in the work because people don't realize yeah, you put the work in high school, but when you get to college, it's a whole nother level that yeah, goes into is. putting in extra work and making sure it's you. It's just know a whole nother level of focus. Yeah, like you got a lot going on, but they expect you to be. They holding you accountable. You know, yeah. you got yeah, you got to go to class. Yeah, there's parties. Yeah, there's girls. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's opportunity and freedom. Yeah. yeah, but they, they like, bro, you, you, we paying you, you know, pretty much paying you to come here to this university for free. So, you know, this is what we're asking you to do. So it's almost like a professional. It's almost like you're 18 years old, but you're 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 automatically a professional because you got X Y Z to do every day. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's a tough transition, but I mean, you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, for sure. You know, you you lead up from ninth grade now. They you go to seminars and different things like that, and they kind of prep you for it. So yeah. you just got to remember why you're there. Like, if you're really there to, to make a difference and to, to, to be something special, you're going to lock in. Yeah. Simple. Exactly. So, so if you go in there to play around, you're going to – you're not yeah, going to – I mean, yeah. it's going to show. It's gonna, yeah. You're going to end up either, you know, your grade is going to slip or not going to get playing time. Yeah. Like, it's going to – some deficiency is going to show if you're not, you know, putting the time in. Yeah. So I guess talking about that, um, I guess the – one of the big news headlines like last week or two weeks ago was Travis Hunter, um, you know, committing to uh, Jackson State. What do you think about that? Or kind of what, what do you think the motive was behind that? Um, you know, me personally, 
I don't know. I mean, yeah, he's a great athlete and things like that. But is are, there's nothing actually? I'm, once I, I'll you know clear this up. There's nothing wrong with going to HBCU at all. There's right. a lot of good athletes that right. go to HBCUs. But I think as far as when you got offers from you know Clemson and Bama, you you're kind of on a bigger platform. And I know Deion Sanders, he's trying to build that bigger platform for those guys. Right. Do you think that was a good move for him, or kind of what do you think was the reasoning behind that? Uh. I like the move. To uh-huh. be honest, I, I it, it's different, you know, because yeah. I mean, guys like Travis Hunter, you know, I mean, it, he, he, he I, to be honest, if he would have just went to Bama, Georgia, Florida, we wouldn't even be talking about it right now because it'd just be another recruit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, they've had number one guys before, so it's like for him to go to Jackson State, like he really not only did something special for himself, but more so for the culture, you know, for the black culture yeah. and for you know the HBCU culture yeah. because. It's like all you hear is, you know, they we, we don't have enough or it's not an even playing field or, you know, you hear all the deficiencies about the black colleges, but you don't, you never, you know, you never see the good stuff or you never see yeah. guys like Travis Hunter, you know, take that step and be like, yeah, I can go anywhere, but I'm going to go here. Mm-hmm. But in his situation, listen, bro, I, I, I feel like Travis Hunter is a generational talent. So like one of the best I've ever seen in person, like ever. And I got a chance to coach him in 7-on-7 yeah. and kind of be around him and kind of tap into his mentality and kind of see what type of dude he is. Bro, Travis Hunter could have went to NAIA, mm-hmm. and he would and he's going to go. So he's a strictly business when he, he kind of – Yeah, uh, like, I, he, just, when I just – he's on the field, he's yes, a strictly like business. Yeah, he, like he's, he's a guy. So, yeah. like, he could have went to Vadasa State. Yeah. He could have went to, you know, anywhere because the, the thing about him, when it comes to the playing, he's not going to play around, and he's a freak out there. You know, he just makes plays that you just don't – you know, normally see. So for him, I think his thoughts process was probably more so like, I know I can go to a big school and, you know, ball out, but I could do it here at an HBCU too. And I mean, everybody's saying, you know, this is the next coming of Deion Sanders. And we haven't seen quite an athlete like this since prime. I mean, in my mind, I would think he was thinking like, what, what better coach to go play for than a guy that literally was in my shoes and, yeah, was just as good as me. You know what and I'm I saying? Like, people are saying that, I mean, yeah. I feel like to me that's a perfect situation because he's going to learn great, great, you know, life skills. Let's go outside of football. You know, Dion's going to give him the life, the life skills, the the life coaching, and the the things outside of X's and O's that he probably wouldn't get at another school. You know, so it's more so. I think it was more so about the connection, and you know, you know, being a shift in the culture and and just being taught by the best. I don't see who. Who you know? Who else you could be taught by besides the best to ever do it? Like he could probably, I could see it now. I mean, he's gonna be taking Travis. He's gonna be going to get his game film from college, pro, and yeah. breaking it all down with Travis, so he fully understands the game not only from a Division One level, but from a pro level, a All Pro level, you know, a Hall yeah. of Fame level. Yeah, so. Exactly. <laughs> that was just my only concern. I yeah. know he's a great athlete. It was just the the more so the platform that he's going to be playing on. Right. You know what I mean? Because I know they don't put HBCU a lot of those games and stuff a on televised, ESPN yeah. or televise them and things like that. So my only concern was just the platform because obviously you go to any other, you know, Power 5 school, you, you're pretty only much. one of the biggest platforms in the world. Yeah, pretty and, much. Gonna and, you know, you're going to get all, week. yeah, every week. And that was just my only concern. I know, but like I said, I know a lot of, a lot of other players, a lot of great players come from HBCUs and smaller schools, so that really didn't have a factor in, you know, whether he's going to get drafted or just right. more so is he going to have the same opportunity if he went to Alabama, even if he, you know, because not saying that th- there are bad athletes at those HBCUs, but obviously a, a lot of times the better ones are going to be at the Alabamas and Georgias right. and Floridas and things like that. So right. that was my only concern against the competition, and I, I just didn't know if NFL scouts or player, you know, people look at that like he only he's going against guys at HBCU right. versus, you know, co- competing against a guy at those top schools every week. And, you know, do you think that those college – not college, but the NFL scouts and stuff will look into that. Or if you can ball, you can ball, no matter uh, what level you're I on. I think I think if you can ball, you can ball. And I I mean, we've seen HBCU guys go, you know, first round, second round, third yeah, exactly. round. So it's more so like if it's already been done. So it's not like if it will be the first time, you yeah. know. And in his level of ability, all they're gonna do is just invite him to the combine. That's all they're gonna do. Yeah. They're just gonna they're gonna say, all right, he was number one recruiting nation of high school, dominated, you know. His level of competition at HBCU, got to respect it. You know, let's just bring him to the NFL com- scouting combine with everybody there, you know, and that's when you'll be able to see, you know, that 
he is that or, you know, maybe he's not as, you know, whatever the case may be. I think that's that's how it's going to go down. I think he'll have a good career at Jackson State. I think he'll get invited to the, um you know, to the combine in Indy, his junior season or whenever he decides to uh, declare. And I think that's when it'll show. And I, I don't think it, it'll be any hiccups because he just he's a baller, yeah. bro. He's got speed. He's got length. He's got great, great ball skills. I mean, some of the best ball skills I've seen. Yeah. So, as long as he keeps the attitude that he has right now, he'll be fine because he's a hard worker. Because yeah, so. he kind of understand both sides. He's play, he plays receiver too, right? Mm-hmm. So he kind of knows both sides of oh, exactly of what he's doing. So I mean, he can pretty and much I mean, play. I'm I'm sure we'll probably see him on both sides. I'm, I'm you think Jackson? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Dion was a two way player, so yeah. you know, if he sees himself in him, he he gonna give him a couple snaps. I, I I would think on offense to give him a chance to you know make some plays. Yeah, for sure. And I guess going into more so like your network of. You know, college coaches, because you kind of you talk to college coaches and I don't know if you talk to a few NFL coaches as well here and there. Um, kind of how did you build those relationships with them? And, you know, that kind of stuff. I know you, you probably can't touch on everything necessarily, mm-hmm. but I guess just the, the biggest part of that. Like, how did you kind of get networked into college scouts, NFL scouts and or uh, not just scouts, just the coaches in general? I, I mean, I think it's kind of the same method is kind of how I grew my client base. I, I, I just put the work out there. To be honest, like I, my client base just comes from, I don't never reach out or send mass messages and say, Hey, da da da. I just, I just, you know, literally give my all to what I'm doing every single day and make it count every single day. And, you know, I put it out there and, you know, people got word of mouth and stuff like that. So I feel like, you know, just how the word of mouth spread with the players and they started trusting me and coming to train with me. I mean, the scouts and the NFL coaches, they started looking at it like, I mean, well, if all of these guys are continuously going back to him each and every seat after every off season, and you know everybody's getting results, yeah. I mean, that's when I think the respect grew from them, and they started reaching out. So it was basically just the same same deal. Like they'd reach out through Instagram or through Twitter, and just kind of show their respects, and you know, tell me, you know, made transfer information, and say, hey man, if you ever want to hit me, feel free, you know, whatever the case may be. But that's kind of how that grew as well, just the same way, just kind of through social media and just went from there. Okay. And, you know, now it's to the point where if I see a kid and I think he can play at a certain level, you know, he'll have somewhere to go, you know, mm-hmm. sooner than, yeah. <laughs> sooner than not. Exactly. So, you know, so it's a blessing, man. But I, I take it serious. I don't, I don't use that, you know, to, to, to my advantage in a wrong way. Yeah. I just, if I feel like a kid deserves it, I'm, you know, I'm gonna have my reasoning and my, you know, my own opinion, obviously, but I always come to the coach with receipts and I show him, I break down their film and I show them this and I, and I break down the training and I, sh- and I match it up and I just kind of give them a projection, you know, and it's on the coach to, you know, see it or not see it. But nine times out of 10, we're on the same page so they can kind of see where I'm coming from. So it's, it's actually helped a lot as far as, you know, getting kids in college because yeah. I'm doing it. I'm breaking it down step by step. And it's, you know, it's just a blessing for me to be to know how to be detailed, but it's because I did it myself. Yeah. And that's the, you know, I feel like that's the the. The number one advantage in coming to train with me, you're training with somebody who built everything from the ground up, from high school recruitment to, you know, getting getting a, a professional deal to yeah. building this company. Like everything has been from scratch. So I'm go- I'm not gonna cheat you. I'm not gonna you know it's gonna all yeah. be <laughs> X Y Z. So yeah, it's okay. definitely. Yeah, and I guess you know before we wrap this up, I guess you know since we're winding down to the end of 2021. <laughs> Uh, what do you see, I guess, like your goals for your business going into next year, even 2023? You know, like what's what's your goals? Like what what, what do you want to see different? What do you want to build different for your company? Um, you know, whether that's uh, your own facility, you know, a bigger facility and things like that. Like kind of what do you see your company growing in the next, you know, one to five years? Uh, So one of my goals last year was to get into combine training. I did that. Um, currently going to be doing that again. Uh, So that's that's kind of off the, the, the checklist. I'm kind of. You know, keeping that rolling. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely, I definitely want a facility. Definitely, uh, that's one of the things. I mean, rather I, I, I'm down, I'm gonna stay down regardless. Yeah. So I don't care if it take. I don't care if I get the facility in 23 or 2030. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I don't care. I'm a, I'm just gonna keep working because the, the work is where it's at. I, I, I don't have to have much to, you know. Obviously, I got <laughs> top DBs at every level working with me, and you know, I don't have my own facility, but they understand as well. Like it's more so about the work than yeah. the, the pretty facility. Exactly. Cause one thing about a facility, it will, it'll one day it'll be here. You yeah. know, that just it just goes like that. If you continue to work, you continue to have success. I mean, it'll be there. But that's definitely one of my goals. And another goal is to just kind of get out a little more. Like last year, I traveled a little bit. I went to LA. I went to Miami. 
went to Texas, you know, I went to Philly, but I want to, I want to, I want to get around just a little bit more and I want to have more so or of camps. Like, cause I was kind of just dropping in kids yeah. just hit me online. Like, Hey man, come to our city. Da, da, da. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just a genuine dude. I'm just popping in like bet. Let's I'm, 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 I'm going to pull up on y'all. I'm giving them some dates, pull up on them, you know, just show some love and just, you know, just put in work, make sure everybody good. You know, that was more so my thing last year, but this year I want to have more formal camps. Like, I sent out the flyers, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, we're going to have it on this day. This is what's going to come about. You know, this is what I'm going to, you know, what you can get coming to the camp and stuff like that. And I'm, I actually want to talk to y'all about making me a gold towel. You know how y'all, okay. yeah. you know how we got the SFSP black and white. Yeah. I was going to have some gold ones made to where like, sure. you can't buy this towel. You yeah. got to earn this towel. limited edition. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, for sure. you, 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 yeah. You only can get it from dominating. Yeah. So, you know, I want to, I want to kind of start that up. Uh, 2022, Every city I go to, I do a camp at, you know, the the best DB there or the, the most outstanding player, I feel like he gets a gold SFSP towel and it's the only one, you know, on the market. You can't buy him. So yeah. I feel like that would be something special, uh, you know, just to do for the kids, keep it competitive. And also it's just it's just really just love. Yeah. That's it, but I mean, growing your team too. I mean, because I know, um, yeah. I mean, you're a big company, but you don't have a lot of people like right. team wise. Right. But is that something you look forward to as well in the future, like building your team? Kind of the same people have the same goals and motivation to help these young players and these athletes out to kind of you know help you. Because I know you're very busy. I know you exactly. like to be busy. Yeah. But sometimes it's okay to step away. Definitely. A little bit, take a break, take a little vacation. Because I know you're like. 365, 24-7, you know, like, we're surprised that we got you, you know, because I know we've been trying to do it for weeks, but, you know, your schedule is real busy, so is that just something you look forward to yeah, as well? Yeah, definitely, De definitely, I am I, I mean, that's definitely was going to be one of my bullet points, uh, I got kind of carried away with the other, <laughs> with the other topic, but no, nah, definitely, gotta, gotta have a team, yeah. I mean, I got, uh, you know, I got a couple of people working with me right now, okay. but I, I definitely need like more trainers and okay. just more, you know, so I can, you know, like you say, I can move around a little bit more and be a little bit more flexible. Yeah. And it, it's always going to take a team no matter what. Yeah. So, you know, if you're building something special, it, it's, it's not just you. It's definitely a team. Like I've, my wife's been here with me the whole time. You know, my brother works with me and, you know, I'm I'm, I'm steady looking because it's, it's hard because, you know, I don't want to just I can easily go on my Instagram and say, hey, man, I'm looking for, uh, you know, uh support and trainers and things like yeah. that i need i need extra staff and i would get thousands of messages yeah. but you know it's hard you gotta you gotta move in a certain way because I, I i represent a certain thing and when i'm not there i don't want it to waver you know yeah, exactly. i don't want kids to be like i don't want to go train unless od's there yeah. you know i don't want it to be like that i don't want it to be a drop off i want it to be somebody that loves the game i want somebody that loves to give back and just knows the importance of being focused and being structured you know so once I find that, you know, I'm going to just go build off that. But okay. I'm definitely in the process of looking around, bro, because I definitely, like you say, I definitely need, uh, you know, just a little bit more wiggle room. Yeah, sure. I don't have to, you know, yeah, nothing wrong <laughs> be with working that. every yeah, day. Yeah. But. Nothing wrong with st taking a step back a little bit. You right. Know what I mean? <laughs> sure. And like I said, you know, we do appreciate you coming out and because we know you're a busy guy, just always training, especially the off season for high school is, you know, it's coming in and, uh, and college is um here so we know you're very busy but we really do appreciate you coming out and um you know we'll put your uh social media handle you know underneath the post and everything um but if you guys of course have any questions for either one of us or we ball sports in general or sweet feet sports performance just drop a comment below just let us know maybe we could do a part two if you know time prevails um just let us know what you guys want to see if you have any questions reach out to od about training he's based here in atlanta um, you know, we do appreciate you guys being here with us today to talk on this podcast and, you know, always like, comment and subscribe to us and we'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.